Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today I have my Mallory. She is my rising second grader and we are about to bring you guys a curriculum review, end of the year review for first grade. And I'm about to be in second grade, so. Yes, that is correct. How did you like first grade? Um, kindergarten was kind of. Not kindergarten, uh, that was like forever ago. First grade. First grade is fun, a little fun. A little fun. So Tell I me. I like. Yes. I like to do handwriting and math. Ooh, my girl. High five, sister. Okay, tell me what you don't like or what you didn't like about first grade. I don't like reading. You don't like reading. What don't you like about reading? It's just, reading is hard. It yeah. is challenging. What do I say about that? I need to have a good night's sleep. You do need to have a good night's sleep. Yes, you need to be rested so that you can do your reading, right? But... Has your reading gotten better this school year? Yes. Yes. Did you pick up a book the other day and read it without mommy's help? Yes, I did. You did, didn't you? And you read it all by yourself. What are some other things that you're reading? Like when we're driving down the street, what are you reading? Signs. Signs. And when we go to the grocery store? Like stop. S-T-O-P. That stop. is correct. What else are you reading? Don't you just like pick up random stuff? You read something the other day. It was like one of the like emergency signs or something at, uh, was it at gymnastics, I think? You read one of the signs that they had posted on the door oh, yeah. at gymnastics, see? So that's why it's important to read, right? Because then you'll be able to know what's going on around you and what people want you to say. Mm -hmm. Oh, remember when we were in Costco? Yeah. And you wanted to get on the little swing thing and I said, no, Mallory, remember? They said, don't get on it. What did that sign say? Don't get on it. It said, do not sit on this furniture. And you read that. Do you Wait, remember? What furniture? The, the swing thing at Costco. You don't remember the swing thing? Oh, the swing thing that you sing back and forth? That's correct. Remember I said, they don't want us to sit on that. And you had to read the sign? So that's why yeah. reading is important, right? But what do you like about your reading? Didn't you do, what do you do when we watch the video? And you have to write stuff down. What is that called? Um... Spelling, spelling analysis. Spelling analysis. That's correct. Do you like spelling analysis? Yes, I do. Yes. How well are you doing with that? Mm, do you ever get better. any wrong? A lot better. A lot better. So what's the treat that you get when you get your spelling words or your sight words? Skittles. You get Skittles. So I've been and treating you think, her. Um, and you think that I can get Skittles after we, um, after we get that with the video? You want Skittles after the video. We'll see. <laughs> All right, sister. Tell everybody bye-bye. I'm going to keep talking to them, okay? Oh, can I do it? Not this time. No, mommy. Tell them you'll be back. Bye. Bye. Okay, go for it, sister. I'll see you in a minute. Okay. Close that door. All right, guys. So that was my first grader, rising second grader. And as you can see, she loved math. She did not like reading so much. That was one of our struggles this year. Math has been a little bit of a struggle too toward the end of the school year, but I'm gonna get into all of the details. So I'm gonna give you guys a recap of what she used. And if I added anything in throughout the school year, I'm gonna share that with you guys as well. So we started out this school year with Saxon Math 1. I believe we did. I'm pretty sure we were done. Yeah, because we finished kindergarten a long time ago. So we were doing Saxon Math 1. I had high hopes that we would finish this Saxon Math 1 curriculum well before now. <laughs> and at the time I'm recording this video, you guys, we are still not done. We have like three lessons to go. And those seem to be the hardest three lessons to get done of the entire school year. It's just us. We're tired and we're ready to be done. But things i really like about saxon math is i do like the different warm-up activities that they give her so we were doing like calendar time so that's the date and then we did all of these different counting drills so counting from uh, by fives up to 50 which she actually does up to 100 because she's capable um, counting from zero to 100 counting by tens starting at one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten um, and then also counting by twos up to I think 30 is what it is counting backwards by tens things like that there were lots of different 
different options for that. This is part of the like morning warm up or the calendar time that they give you in the curriculum. And so with that, that was a part of our morning routine. There was also clock activities and I always took it a little bit further because you can tell time where in the clock activities that they would do, it may say, you know, have your child do like half past 12 o'clock. And so she was able to do that. We've been doing that pretty much all year, but the curriculum didn't really call for it until about halfway through the school year. So that was good too. Knowing the difference between AM and PM or morning and night, um, the different meals that you have, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Those are some of the activities, different pattern things. She's very good at patterns. And so that was a part of it that we cut out very early on in the beginning of the curriculum. Some other things that it had her work on were counting money. We are now up to counting quarters and doing different combinations. So you have your dimes, your nickels, your pennies. If you have this many, how much money do you have? Can, um, I wanna join the video. Not right now, sis, okay. Bye! <laughs> counting money. Uh, so she's working on that, knowing that 100 pennies also equals a dollar. Some other things that we worked on in the beginning of this uh, curriculum, as far as the warm up piece goes, was um, we would gradually write numbers. So as you go throughout every day, it'll have you add a number to the lumber line. And we got off on that. And I just started having her do the number of the lesson that we were on. So lesson 100 to 23, how do you write 123? What number's in the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place? We did all of that. And then you turn that 123 into money. So 100, how many pennies is that? 100 pennies, that also equals $1. That type of stuff with the um, introductory things. And I really enjoyed those. Sometimes she didn't like them, we would have to break them up. I would do maybe half at the beginning of the lesson and we would do the other half in the car so i would work on things that we needed like the money aspect we would do that at the table and then later on throughout the day if we were going somewhere i would go through the other pieces in the car some other things that we worked on within that curriculum is just math facts and somewhere along the line we just lost it with the math facts they're just not sticking for her right now she can do what I will say are the, the simple ones. So, you know, the, the zeros, addition and subtraction, doubles, doubles plus ones, adding ones, adding two. Um, she can do all of those, subtracting one, subtracting two. Those are just fine, no problems for her. It's doing the nines and all the odd facts that we are really having some struggles with. We do practice on them and we probably don't practice on them enough, honestly. So I can't say that the way they present them is incorrect. I mean, at the end of the day, math facts are math facts and it's really memorization and there are tricks and trades to go with different ones. Like I have a couple of nines tricks and you know, the adding doubles plus ones and adding doubles. They're just little tricks with them. And when there are tricks, she likes it, but she also is really hands-on. So we are going to work on math facts this summer. There's flashcards that they come with when you buy the um, curriculum, but also in here for each lesson, it's going to give you instructions to make your own flashcards, like with uh, cards, the little, I always forget what those little cards are with the lines on them, y'all. The little three by five cards. Anyway, index cards. <laughs> and you don't have to make those if you buy the student packet because they're already there. So I caught that early on and I didn't make any, just use the color that it had to bring in. There is some prep in the morning, especially at the beginning of the curriculum. Like you are making different things on pieces of paper and different shapes and things like that. Um, it's really easy, but it's just some prep. Like you wanna look ahead at least the night before so that you have an idea of what's going on. I like to look at the entire week's lessons so I have an idea where we're headed. And then if there's anything that I need to make, I do that over the weekend because typically during the week we're so busy, I just don't have time to look at it the night before and then make a little chart. And you know, and it's all things that you have at home, construction paper, card stock, markers, crayons, scissors, you know, nothing outrageous. There was nothing that we had to make where I was like, oh, I gotta go buy this, nothing like that. We also did lots of like measurements and things like that. It gave like a broad overview of some of those things and then kind of circled back around. So it is a spiral approach in the curriculum, which I do love. The, also the student sheets are very um, easy, I guess I would say, to navigate. If she could read independently, she would not need my help with the student sheets. 
they're not all colorful it's one color you guys like that you know recycled paper type of color <laughs> and then the ink is black that's it she also learned about measuring and using rulers um, and overall do i feel like it gave her great math skills yes and foundation absolutely um as you guys know, we, if you don't know, and maybe you don't, we use Saxon for my oldest daughter. She has used it for the past three years and it's a great curriculum. This will be my first time going through the lower levels. We did kindergarten and finishing off first grade. However, I do love the curriculum. I just don't love it for her. And I don't think that she loves it. And math is supposed to be fun. Like all the time, I feel like, especially at the younger ages, it should be fun. And I really love math. But this year has been hard trying to teach her math. There's just been some things that she just doesn't get or maybe she doesn't want to get. There are definitely things that I'm like, I know you know this because I taught you, but she's just not feeling it for the day. But if I tell her to go and grab, we have like these um, worksheets. If I say, go grab your math worksheets, she'll run and grab them and she's like going through them. I believe that it's more of like the color and the excitement thing. She loves the activities and everything. Another thing that we started doing about halfway through the school years, I found here on YouTube and it's called, there's a YouTube channel, um, the bird's nest or something like that. I will link it down below, but she has all of the lessons and it doesn't say like Saxon math one. It just says like math one, math two, but it is for Saxon math. And she teaches all the lessons via video and Mallory loved it. She sits down, she would quietly watch the videos. If there were any manipulatives that I could add in that she could do with the lady on the video, she would do that. It was, it was awesome. And that's how she went through the lesson. So I stopped having to really like teach her the lesson unless I felt like the video was too long and none of the videos were longer than like 10 minutes at all. Majority of them were like five minutes or less. But if I felt like the video was too long or if I felt like this was really a concept that she could catch really quickly, I would just quickly explain it to her. We would go through the worksheet and she would do great with it. So that's a plus to the curriculum. Also, just like in the older levels in Saxon Math, she does a Math Facts warm-up sheet. It's not timed, um, but she does go through the questions in, on Math Facts, and I really like that. Um, it helps with the memorization of Math Facts and, and putting all those different tools and tips and tricks together to be able to answer those. And that's something that she really did enjoy, and she likes going through and grading it herself, and. So yeah, I think one of the biggest things and takeaways from this curriculum is the presentation of math facts and, and just how we were doing it just didn't work. And looking at the curriculum itself with a visual eye, okay? It's just not exciting for her. And I typically don't say this, okay, y'all? Like I'm not that person, but I just don't, I feel like it's just a little too rigorous for a first grader. Ooh, somebody's gonna come for me, I know, but they should be having fun. And while getting, doing the lessons is fun, right? But when you get to the sheets, it's like, they're, they, no, <laughs> the fun is gone. Like worksheets, get it done and you're done with it. So I would say that overall it is solid. Saxon is a solid curriculum. I do not think that it is like a no in the younger years for anyone. And yes, I do know that the creator of Saxon Math did not create the younger years um, like he did the older ones. So I know that he's not the creator of that. And so I, I understand that, that portion of it. But a lot of it to me, having seen the older and now done with the younger, it is very closely related. The format is just a little bit different, but it's not so much different that it's like, I'll never touch the younger years. But overall, I would give it a great A because it has all of the foundational math skills that I feel like she needed. Um, but as far as a fit for us, it just wasn't for us. So we are going to finish those last three lessons because that is just me when it comes to this. And it's just the last three lessons. However, we will not be using Saxon Math next year for grade two. So if you want to know what we're going to be using for math, make sure you subscribe and stick around because I'll be sharing that really soon. All right, moving on to reading, spelling, phonetics, that type of thing. We have been using 
foundations, Logic of English Foundations C. And I believe we started this maybe September or so. She has done foundations A and B and did great. And now we are finishing off C. We're not done. My goal was to be done by the end of May and we are not there. We have about 25 lessons left. And that includes the assessments, which there's a regular assessment and then there's like a reading comprehension portion. Um, and so that's like 25. So we're not going to finish by the end of May. And I've just come to the conclusion like, that's okay, it's fine. We're going to just keep working on it and we'll just go right into whatever we're gonna do next. But I really love this curriculum. There are a lot of people who are like, no, it doesn't work for them. But let me tell you some things that I love about it. I love how it presents the phonograms. She has really hung on to each and every one of the phonograms. And I have learned a lot, you guys, because I was not taught this way. At least I don't remember being taught this way. My girls just from listening to us when we go through the curriculum, they have learned a ton. It has helped them with their spelling curriculum. Like it's just overall the presentation of the phonograms and the amount of opportunities to practice the um, high frequency words and how those are presented. The books, there are readers that come along with this curriculum, 10 readers that you will get that you purchase with the curriculum and there are 10 readers and then there are two chapter books for this level a and b just have the 10 readers one of them has a, an additional set of readers but that go along with this and the book references those for specific lessons you go through those readers as the lessons give you instruction to do so and they are specifically lined out to progress as your child progresses through the curriculum. The reading comprehension has really picked up in this level, which I think is great. And so she will read the books. And I'll be honest, sometimes it takes us the whole day. <laughs> and I say the whole day because we'll read some and I'll ask her some questions and the book gives you different questions to ask or you can do your own, which is great either way. And then we may have to take a break because this is a brand new book. There's new phonograms that she's learning how to use, lots of new words, and it just takes a little bit of time. There are a total of 40 lessons. However, as I said before, there are assessments. You have assessment A through H, and with each lesson, there's also an opportunity to read the chapters in the two chapter books. And there are eight or nine of those as well, chapters within those two books. So there's a lot. And right now we are taking two days for one lesson. You have your phonogram, maybe an introduction of a new phonogram. You have practice with previous concepts that have been learned, spelling analysis, which is where you learn how to use current, uh, the new phonogram maybe that you just learned, but also previous ones. And they have about five spelling words. Then there's lots of different games and activities within the curriculum. Things where your child is like running across the house or maybe they're playing basketball or doing some type of like, I would call it an art thing or they have to cut and paste and match things with the pictures. There's different game boards that they go through and do so many different activities. And that's one of the reasons why I love it because it really doesn't feel like she's learning that much. But there are times when there aren't games, like different portions that they go through that there are not games. And that's okay. I think there's a healthy balance between the two to where your child still understands that this is this is serious, this is your education, it's time to learn, but also that we can learn and have fun. And that's what I really like about Logic of English, the foundation series, all of them, is how they lay it out. So you'll have a game, and then you maybe don't have a game where they just have to read a book, and then they'll go into another game. So there are lots of different opportunities to switch back and forth in case your child is like mine and gets bored. It's a really fun curriculum, and it's getting the point home for us so i'm enjoying it we are like i said almost done another thing is that this has really been helpful with my daughter for speech therapy in the first two books it gave different speech boxes i've seen a lot less of them here but the progression for her speech has been really helpful and a lot of those concepts within those speech boxes for foundations a and b she has really used for foundations C, which is amazing that she's held on to those. Also, lots of spelling rules. It can be overwhelming, but there are spelling charts that they have that come along with this that you can purchase, and it just gives you a list of all of the different spelling rules. She can recite those spelling rules back to me. 
which is helping with her spelling analysis and her decoding of specific words because she knows the rules. And you have to learn the rules in order to be able to understand why this word is spelled this way. And that's the piece of it that has been super helpful for me because I just learned how to spell. People just learned how to spell with sight words. You look at the word, you memorize it, you keep looking at it, look, 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 this is what it looks like, this is how it's spelled, say it, say it, say it, and that's it. But why is it spelled this way? Why does this silent final E change the sound of g to j or k to s like there's just so many different things why does it change the vowel before it and make it say its long name and when to be able to recognize that and that all of these different phonograms some of them make the same sounds but in this word they made this sound and why does it make that sound it's really been great um i don't think that i could have chosen and had an opportunity to use a better curriculum when it comes to reading there is a learning curve you guys I will be honest you do have to get in a groove of this curriculum now since we've been using it since a and b the format has not changed some other concepts have been added on like composition where we may talk about a subject and write down different bullet points about it now you have to put that into a sentence and make it make sense she's learning about punctuation commas exclamation points question marks that is a part of this as well. It is light, but it is here. And I can appreciate that. And I, it's not something that I wanna drive home to her right now. There's also a handwriting component. I'll be honest, we have not used the handwriting components of it. She has really dug her heels in when it comes to handwriting. So I had to find something that was super fun for her, but her handwriting is improving. And within the composition portion, I do still have her write the sentences and it gives you various um, sizes of lines for your child to write on. And so we're kind of just slowly making our way up to the smallest line, which is at the top. But she's doing really well with that. So there is a handwriting component. You can choose um, manuscript or you can cho choose cursive in foundations A and B. And then your child just follows with that in C. So there's not a specific um, handwriting learning to do the handwriting in foundation C it's all in A and B and just carries over to whatever method you chose for your child for C um some other things when you go through the assessment it tells you what portions of the assessment your child should have mastered by giving them a number one through three if it is a three that's the hardest thing they should not have a master, but maybe have some knowledge of having ever, you know, talked about or worked on that subject. If it's a two, they should be able to do it one, 100%. They should be able to do it. If they're not able to do it, it gives you a reference as to where to go and uh, what to practice on for that specific concept that maybe your child did not understand. Other than that, some cons that maybe people may come up with is that the lessons are long. Like I said, we take two days to do a lesson, which is about 25 to 30 minutes a day, which is not bad. It's not bad at all. But if you're one of those people like, I want to get a lesson done every day, this is not going to work. This will not be for you because you will not do it. You will stress your child out. You will work all day long. But it's lined out for that intentionally. And as I said, there's only about maybe if you add up all of the assessments, Plus the lessons are about 55, 56. And if you do that twice a day, that takes you to a whole school year. So that's pretty much what it took us. We, we did take some extra days off because we're not done yet. But also we didn't start at the very beginning of the school year either. So um, Foundation C has been great for us. Um, I love all of the color and it's just worked. It's worked really, really good. So I'll probably give you a little spoiler alert. We're just going to continue with Logic of English Foundations and uh, see where it takes us. So this was a win for us. All right, moving on to just some extra stuff that I bought for her at the beginning of the year to kind of work on some things. I purchased this Reading Comprehension Activities book, grade one. We are not even halfway through the book. We did about one or two lessons per week, maybe. Um, but this book is really good though. She enjoys it. I do have to read the lessons to her, but it has different sections, critical thinking sections, and they're all color coded. So the purple is, let's see, skills use text feature to locate key features. We are not there yet. And then we also have describe character setting and major events. That's another one. Answer questions with key details or about key details. Um, Activate prior knowledge. So there's different sections within the book, but she enjoys this book. It's something that's really great. So we're gonna keep it. We're gonna keep going with this curriculum 
and just see where it takes us. They do have this for kindergarten through fifth grade if you are interested in grabbing it. It was only about eight or nine dollars, but definitely this has been a winner for us and it's something that I will keep in the rotation for however long until we're done with it. Some things that I started using, I actually came across this maybe like December and it's just a sight words book. It says for three plus, it is very simple. However, it works on handwriting as well. Just basic handwriting it says trace the sight words and then she can review the sight words here. She usually does about four to five pages in this once or twice a week. So we're not quite done yet, but in the front of the book, it has a list of every sight word that is in this book. And so I just have her go through and just read the sight words up until the point where we are. There are a lot that she can already read that we have not gotten to, but it's just an extra practice book for her. So we'll keep going through this and just use it up. And it just gives her an opportunity to see the words in a different format outside of, you know, the Logic of English Foundation C curriculum. And then it also gives her um, a confidence booster because she already knows the words. So we work on handwriting. She goes through and reads the words. She reads the sentences and it's great. Not everything that they're learning has to be a challenge all the time especially at the younger years in my opinion you got to give them something easy something that they can feel confident with and sit down by themselves and say I can do this and I don't need your help mom or dad um, I think that is great for building our children's confidence when it comes to their learning okay another thing that we did was map skills for today grade one we are almost done with this book I think she has like maybe I don't know, maybe six or seven pages left, but this has been really fun. I've, I've enjoyed this. She enjoys it too. Lots of different things about like going through and figuring how to make a map of your room and North, South, East and West and um, looking at a map and figuring out which direction you have to go to to get to a certain place. This has been a fun, fun book. And it also goes up to grade number six. So we're not done with this. And so I have not purchased the next level. I may or may not, but this was definitely worth it. It was $4. I mean, you cannot beat that for a map skills book, you guys. Okay, moving on to a couple of things. Now I have not mentioned any hits or misses, just giving you guys my opinion um, because not everything is going to work for everyone. So I purchased the 180 days of social studies for first grade just to give her some, you know, it has civics, economics, geography, history. She listens in for our history with, with our read alouds and stuff for history. And then we do a little bit of geography and obviously we have the maps book that I just showed you. But I purchased this book just as a, like a broad overview sweep. And I don't like it. I'll just be honest, y'all. I, I don't like it. I definitely feel like it is um, not worth the time and the effort. Um, I feel like it is lacking. That's it. It has it is lacking substance, guys. <laughs> that That's what I will say when it comes to that. Um, very surface level. A couple of examples that I'll give you is that it had specific people in the book and Mae Jemison. Uh, we know that she was the first African-American woman to go into space and it didn't say that. It just said she went into space and pretty much that was it. I wish I could find the page, but <laughs> it was very uh, superficial. Oh, it says Mae Jemison lives in the United States. She went to space. She was an astronaut. Uh, that's it. That's all. And then it had three questions or two questions to answer and then something to draw. There's that. Um, it said the same thing. I mean, Thomas Edison invented the light bulbs. That's it. Like done. Okay. Um, and then it asked who, what was he an inventor and why are light bulbs important? Uh, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King Jr. Had a dream. He told people his dream. He wanted us to be fair. He wanted us to be friends. And then it had a question. What did King want? He wanted people to be fair. Well, I elaborate more because that's important. Um, another one, Neil Armstrong, he walked the moon. He put a flag on the moon. I mean, basically that's, that's what it says when it's talking about people. There were some decent map if, uh, skills type things in here, but this is not my favorite. There's no color to it as well. Um, there are a couple of like cut and paste activities, but we have not finished this. We are on week nine day five I believe it is and we won't finish this book guys this this is something that I will release because 
I don't feel like it is providing us with what we're looking for at this age level for her. Um, it just needs a little bit more oomph to it. I know a lot of people like the older years and I definitely feel like they probably provide more information. And I think that maybe they set this up because they know it's for a first grader. And so don't put too much in it, which I can completely understand and appreciate. But I just feel like there were some key things. If you're going to shorten it, those key things should not have been the things to be removed. Those should be left and then some of the other fluff taken out. So this was not a hit for us uh, for this year and we just won't keep using it. So not for us. Um, some other things that we did were uh, word search puzzles and she's still working through this, but she loves it. She loves doing word searches. So we're holding on to this one and we'll just keep using that in spare time. Another thing was the big book of mazes that I got her because she was really into mazes at the beginning of the year. But y'all, she finished all the mazes in the book. Every single, do you see this? Now, there are other pages in here. Like there's some math work within here. I'm trying to find it um, that we have not done. There's things like tic-tac-toe, um, lots of tic-tac-toe pages, but then also math th things like this. So I'm gonna keep this and we will use this extra activity just to do some math work. She still loves this book though. So we go through and we'll do some math work on it. But as far as mazes, she has done every single one of them. Now I will say probably 85 to 90% of the book is mazes. So when you're looking at all of this, majority of this is maze work and she's just done. She's like, I'm going through. And as you go throughout the book, the mazes get more and more challenging, but she completed them. She was like, I'm done. I know what I'm doing. Let's move on. But this was really fun. So we'll keep this and we'll keep working through it as far as doing like the math pages and maybe the tic-tac-toe stuff. But as far as the mazes, she's done with that. Another thing that we started this year was the Good and the Beautiful handwriting one. She finished handwriting level K one and two. I don't know, at the beginning of the school year. And then we kind of flopped around to a lot of different things. I had a lot of like handwriting worksheets that I printed off from previous years that she worked on. And so now we're doing the Getting the Beautifuls level one. I just printed this off and laminated and um, did the spiral bounding on it. But um, we like it. She actually is working on her handwriting. I like that there's an assessment in here every so often and I told her, okay, now it's time for me to judge how you are writing. And she was like, oh, you know, she was like, oh, I need to do better because my work is going to be checked. And so when I read the instructions to her, she was like, oh man. So she's really working more on her handwriting. So this is working for us. So we're gonna just keep going with the Getting the Beautiful's handwriting just because it has assessments. She's not a big fan of coloring and drawing, so she hasn't done much of that, but Everything else in here has been great for her with this handwriting. That is pretty much all that she has done this year. We maybe pulled a few papers here and there, but nothing significant that I would share with you guys. But outside of that, we've had a really great first grade year. Make sure you stick around to get second grade curriculum picks. Um, was this school year easy with her? No, it wasn't. It was a tough year. We worked really, really hard. She worked really, really hard. And some days she didn't work hard because she didn't want to do it. <laughs> but that's just a part of the process and working through it. I'm very grateful that I did not abandon any curriculum because it got hard because we wouldn't be here and we would have stopped this a long time ago. But sometimes your child needs a break. So we did take some breaks here and there, added in some different sheets, which is a big part of the reason why we're not done with either one of those. But sometimes they just need a break. And I'm not one to just hop, hop, hop all the time to a different curriculum just because my child is unhappy with it, unless there's something like significant with it. And I just think that some days she just didn't wanna do it. So that is the reason why we continued with these two core things throughout the entire year, just off and on at her pace because they were still showing or she was still showing growth using these two curriculum, significant growth, not baby steps, but like significant growth for her throughout this first grade year. So I'd love to know your comments. Make sure you put those down below for me and I will see you guys in our fifth grade year in review. Bye.